Hello, James here from Present Day Production and today we're talking about three things you shouldn't spend your money on and three things you should spend your money on when you're first starting out in recording. So first off, let's have a look at the three things you shouldn't spend your money on. Number one, mic preamps. Morning. All right. How you doing? Yeah, a bit late. Traffic was pants. Yeah. Uh, what you up to? Oh, I, uh, I've been reading up. I thought we should buy some new uh, preamps. I heard if you buy a load of preamps, it can really take your, your music to the next level. Cool. So you've ordered 16 stereo Neve 1073s, I assume, to replace the 32 we've got in the desk? Yeah, they're much better. Great. And the total is? Uh, £38,304. <laughs> So back in the golden days of analog audio recording, we used to record to tape, normally two inch 24 track tape. And what would happen is you'd go into the studio, the tape machine would be there, the tape machine would be plumbed into a large, normally 48 channel mixing desk. You'd set up your microphones in the live room and then those microphones would go straight into the mic preamps on the back of whatever desk was in the control room. It could have been a Neve, it could have been an SSL, it could have been a Trident, sometimes it was a Soundtrax, sometimes it was a Harrison, sometimes it was a Soundcraft or something a little bit cheaper. But mic preamps were never really a consideration. All they had to do was one simple thing. They had to make the tiny sound coming out the microphone louder so as you could feed it into the tape machine. And still, today, that's all they do. But then what happened was the digital audio workstation revolution came along and lots of people like me and you and other people started using computers instead of tape machines. Many advantages, in fact, mainly advantages. But what about the mic preamp thing? How did that happen? Well, a whole marketplace was kind of developed trying to sell us boutique mic preamps. Boutique mic preamps will give us that golden age sound, that wonderful sound from the 70s, 80s and early 90s that you hear on all the records spend three grand on a preamp and you're going to get that magical vocal sound well it's just not true i've used all sorts of different mic preamps and i'm perfectly happy still with the ones in the desk the ones in the desk sound great is it worth spending the kind of money james was looking at on mic preamps in my opinion no absolutely not there's a very good article from sound on sound a widely respected audio magazine um, where they did a microphone shootout and it's very difficult to do a microphone shootout because you have to get a repeatable performance so they did it with a yamaha disclavier which is a piano which is under midi control and plays itself and plays it the same way every single time every time you hit play it gives you a precisely repeated performance great we'll link to that article below because it's very very interesting reading and very interesting listening as well but let me just quote you a little bit from the end of that article many of us in the sound on sound office felt unable to confidently tell the anonymized files apart in any repeated or reliable fashion now they were testing everything from a 30 pound mic preamp found in a budget mackie desk to top of the range mic preamps costing thousands and thousands of pounds. And most of the guys in the sound on sound office couldn't hear the difference between them. I've listened to the files myself on very expensive studio monitors and very expensive headphones. And there are some very, very subtle differences between I thought particularly the API and one other mic preamp that I can't, I can't even remember what it was. Uh, can't remember what it was then it doesn't really matter but the the differences are that they're literally that so one of the worst things you can go out and spend a ton of money on when you're first starting out in audio are boutique mic preamps just you know wait till you've got more experience and if then if you're a singer and you feel the need to go out and spend two thousand quid on a mic preamp then by all means do it but that's the last of your concerns when you're starting out so what's the second thing you shouldn't spend a ton of money on when you're first starting out? Is it Bisto? Is it Hello Kitty mugs? No, it's neither of those things. It is number two, plugins. Plugins. There's a huge market nowadays for spending an absolute fortune on hundreds of plugins, whether it gives you compression, EQ, reverb, space sounds, whatever you can think of, there's a plugin for it. The reality is, Mixing consists of three main topics, 
compression, EQ, and effects. Now, I've been mixing for a few years, and even after the few years experience I do have, I still find myself just going back to the basics and thinking, how simple can I make this? It needs a bit of compression, a bit of EQ, and a bit of FX, such as reverb delay. Now, all DAWs, whether it's an expensive one, such as Logic or Pro Tools, or a free DAW, such as Audacity, all come with their own version of basic plugins. And to be honest, when you're starting out, those will do. Now, as I say, I've been mixing for a few years and I still go back to Logic's own free plugins because they just sound great, they get the job done, and they're easy to use. At the end of the day, if you can do a good mix using the tools that you're given for free, you'll be able to do a good mix with anything. So when you're first starting out, don't spend all your money on plugins. And that brings us to number three, which is... Number three, analog hardware. I like playing with my knobs, with my knobs, with my knobs, woo! Hardware, hardware is fun. There's no disputing that hardware is fun. But do you need a load of it? Do you need racks of compressors and racks of outboard EQ when you're first starting out? The answer is no, you don't. That's not gonna give you the magic silver bullet to get a really good recording. So when you're first starting out, don't go and spend an absolute ton of money on hardware. You really don't need to. So that brings us on to the things that you should spend your money on. Number one, what is it? Is it chocolate soft scoop ice cream? No, it's number one, your room. Acoustic treatment, acoustic treatment, acoustic treatment. Acoustic treatment, and up there. Acoustic treatment, acoustic treatment, acoustic treatment, and on that wall too, acoustic treatment. If you've ever done music production at home, chances are you'll be doing it in a square or rectangular room. Both of those are the worst shapes possible for music production. The reason for that is because of standing waves and room modes. Here's a little experiment. Turn some music on, go for a walk around the room. You might find that the bass becomes louder in the corner of the rooms and it might even disappear completely in the center of the room. This is why acoustic treatment is absolutely essential. It basically eliminates these problems, meaning that what you're listening to is a true representation of what's coming out of your speakers. Number two, decent monitors. Decent monitors, you need a pair of decent monitors. No, not those. Audio monitors, you need a pair of decent audio monitors. Now, once you've got your room sorted, and only once you've got your room sorted, because if you spend a lot of money on monitors and no money on your room acoustics, you've just wasted a load of money on some monitors that you can't hear properly. So once you've sorted your room acoustics out, then spend as much money as you can on a decent pair of monitors. Yes, you can mix on headphones, but the disadvantage with headphones is that the sound from the left and the right is coming from there and there, and the sound from the middle is coming from there and there at the same time. There's never anything coming from there. And a decent pair of monitors will get your center image coming from there. If you can afford three-way monitors, go for three-way monitors. There's many technical reasons why they are better than two-way monitors. And just basically spend as much money as you can on monitors. If you walk into any mastering studio, any high-end mix studio, including our one, you'll see three-way professional monitors, sometimes in the wall, sometimes not in the wall. It depends on the design of the room and the speakers, but you're gonna find something by ATC or PMC or Quested or a company like that. And the monitors are normally gonna be sort of, you know, well into five figure territory. And there's a reason for that. You, if you can't hear what you're doing, then you can't hear what you're doing and you have to be able to hear what you're doing. So once you've got your room sorted, spend as much money as you can on a decent pair of monitors. Number three, the source. The third and final thing that we think you should spend all your money on is source. Not that source, the source, where the sound is coming from. Whenever you're recording, it's really important to make sure that whatever is producing the sound, for example, a bag of peas, a snare drum, a guitar, whatever you might be recording, sounds as good as it possibly can. It's fine to try and fix stuff in the mix afterwards, but trust me, it's a hell of a lot easier if you don't have to do that. 
If your initial recording sounds as good as possible, then it's gonna create a lot less work for you later because you won't have to be fixing problems that don't exist. So for example, if you're a guitarist, make sure your guitar's in tune and your amp sounds good. If you're a drummer, make sure your drums are in tune. If you're a singer, go and audition some mics when you buy one and see what sounds best with your voice. It will make it so much easier for either you or a producer later down the line to get a good sound from your recording. All right. Yep, what are you doing now? Oh, I just canceled that order for those preamps. I don't think I need them. Brilliant, does that mean we can afford Bisto and soft scoop ice cream? Yeah. Awesome.